All right, let's, uh, let's start. We, we have uh, half an hour for this uh, short debate. Uh, we, we, we thought that uh, we would take the opportunity of having a number of developments to try to have a short discussion of what they are doing, why, uh, in terms of domestic resource mobilization in developing countries, and especially what were the challenges that they were facing, because obviously it's not something easy to do. Uh, and what we discussed so far about ownership, about the political issues, are very much locally defined as well, and you need to know the local environment and so on. That means that trying from the outside to have a positive impact on domestic resource mobilization shouldn't be taken as an easy thing to do. So I would like uh, our friends here to share with us not only what they are doing and why, so this is the purpose of this discussion. And we are lucky enough to have uh, three uh, brilliant panelists uh, with us. Uh, let me start with uh, uh, Hélène on my left. Hélène Jouvelkit is uh, the Director of Economic Diagnosis and Public Policy Department of the French Development Agency, AFD. Then we have uh, Ariane Dehan, uh, who is a senior, it, it, it's a development donor, but basically it's focusing on the impact on research uh, on development and trying to promote the use of research uh, in development. And Abdul Abiyad, who is director of, macro, of the Macroeconomics Research Division of the Asian Development Bank, the ADB, based in, uh, in, in Manila. So we have a diversity of perspectives. The, the first, what, what our friends are doing with the, in, in their organization and, and, and why. So, Helen, why don't you start? Thank you uh, very much. So, um, first I will start by the why are we uh, working on uh, domestic resource mobilization. So I think that uh, we are all, you know, constating uh, what is happening now. Uh, 2.5 trillion before the pandemic and with the crisis it has been increasing by 1.7 billion. So we are now with a gap of 4.2 billion trillion of uh, US dollar per annum. Uh, uh, on parallel, if we are looking at the external financing, there are approximately two trillion US dollar per annum. So uh, there is a, the amounts of financing and the needs of financing are huge and the room of maneuver for most low income countries are very low because uh, the debt crisis is there. Uh, half of the African countries are now in high debt of risk distress. So again, this background, uh, the domestic revenue mobilization, domestic revenue represents a huge amount of uh, finance in the low-income countries. We all know that uh, the average is less than 15% of uh, GDP. So uh, there is a big challenge to increase domestic resource mobilization. So this is uh, the, the, the what. Uh, the why, sorry, and uh, at the AFD, what are we doing? So we are just, uh, we are implementing the French strategy uh, developed by the French uh, that has been developed in 2020. And basically, uh, the objective of this strategy is twofold. First, of course, increase the amount uh, of the resources, of the, of the taxes. And second, uh, to have a more qualitative approach, and there is a threefold approach to, uh, in terms of qualitative. So the first of all is to increase the transparency that are being really uh, reporting. Uh, so transparency is uh, the first one. The second objective is really to improve the equity uh, of tax uh, collecting and, and, and distribution. 
And, uh, and the final one is uh, the fight against product uh, corruption. So the, these are the objectives. Uh, in terms of countries, we are focusing uh, more uh, on African countries. We are also intervening in Latin America and Asia, uh, uh, quite uh, in, in a lower extent. And finally, on the actions, uh, on the instruments, so we, are, we have three kind of approach. So the first one is we really want uh, um, to support the, the tax policy reforms. What is important is uh, to uh, uh, increase uh, uh, really the, the tax compliance, uh, which goes to the legitimacy of, of the taxes. Uh, uh, the second one is to uh, strengthen the tax efficiency and uh, uh, of the of the tax and the custom administration. So this is uh, really to increase the efficiency. And finally, as digitalization and uh, uh, um, you know uh, online tax filling and uh, mobile paying paying. So this is uh, this is the three components and. For all those who are really relying on the French expertise, uh, uh, as the French Treasury expertise France, and uh, most of all, we are relying on research. And, and of course, uh, such a conference is really important to us because it has been already uh, tackled, but uh, the input of research are really important for uh, you know, uh, understanding the context you were mentioning, Pierre, and uh, improve the, 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 the diagnostics. So I stop here for now, but this is this where the why and what for. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I think mine follows uh, very nicely from uh, from uh, Lance. And first of all, thanks, Pierre, and congratulations on this uh, on this conference. In terms of the themes that we're working on, uh, it, this is we, we're doing the same stuff. I think we're all an IDRC to address in different contexts the biggest the biggest challenge that that the world we all uh, we all face is uh, is is climate change uh, and uh, the panel this morning just just told us how difficult this is how important that that research uh, research is so thematically not not much to add on it but to say yes this is this is clearly that we're based in uh, based in in, in ottawa uh, which was occupied last winter. That's that's not that. I mean, it was actually quite humbling. The other thing that I should say to Rutten's point, IDRC is also uh, uh, located on the unceded territory of Indigenous people, the the uh, Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Uh, the, the issue of colonization and decolonization. If there's one challenge we all face, is actually uh, IDRC is is a is, it's not a, a government department that doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, but importantly, is what was mandated by the Canadian Parliament to support research for development in developing countries. So our specific mandate, and and and, and we're really proud of uh, proud of that, is that that our funding goes directly to. Uh, uh, to to uh, to to research issues, uh, innovations that work in local uh, local context, um, and 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 I think on on the the, the resource mobilization, I I, I think the, the point that uh, Thomas Melonio for Avdes uh, Thomas made made yesterday is is really important. As a development agency, we have to realize that we're really small, getting smaller and smaller as we as we speak. So we constantly have to think about, okay, how, we have a limited taxpayer's money, we have to spend it well, how can we best do that? And and, and at, uh, the, 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 the role of, uh, he, he, he talked about the catalytic role, I think that it was the term that he used, that, that we can play. And that, that's where research comes into, uh, into play. Uh, the other term, I'm wondering who invited if I determined it. It's research as development. It's research, not just research for development, but it's research as, as development. Research is part 
of the change that we want to see. So the last thing I want to see, say on that, and I think where IDRC has, uh, where we've used our experience over many decades, really to think about how can, we, we didn't use the term, but I think that uh, support resources most useful for the change that we, uh, w that we, that we want to, uh, to, to see. And, 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 I, and I think making that, Again, what IDRC, based on this 50 years experience, has, has really benefited from, and we developed a framework around that. If people are interested, please do look at what we call the RQ Plus framework, the research quality of research projects, part, equal parts of the assessment. Of course, all the research we support has to be the highest quality. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And to bring global expertise in this is, is we want to fund the best research. There's no doubt about it. But the other two elements are equally important. So when we assess research, uh, research projects, we really think about researchers don't have the incentives. How can we support researchers in the best possible way to position their research for the impact that they have? And planning for this and training young researchers, which universities often don't, don't do. I mean, of course, there's some university extended at that. Really preparing the research project and the researchers for how can you best have that impact if you do analysis of factors that are going to happen. Is that going to run into the problem that we have in, in Ontario, that whether a provincial government that really didn't care that much, right? Thinking about how that research can have the best possible impact. And through that, and then I come, come, come back to, to the main issue uh, for that IDRC is is, is to, to what our funding does is through funding that research to engage with an ever-evolving policy. Uh, policy. Because in the end, what we strongly believe, and I think that everybody agrees to that, with that, but there's a funding issue in that, is that in the end, the solutions are local. And for us, therefore, the research by research that are embedded in that, in that context is absolutely, uh, absolutely critical. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ryan. And of course, that links to for research. Uh, because when you look at what happens nowadays, despite the effort of IDRC and others, uh, about uh, more than 90% of uh, all published uh, research on development is done in developed countries. So that's something that shows the extent of the work we need to do collectively. Uh, Abdul. It's been very interesting. So just for those who aren't familiar with the um, uh, what's happening in Asia on the domestic research mobilization and, and uh, uh, international tax cooperation front. So DRM is an issue in developing Asia as well. Tax revenues on average about 16% of GDP, about on par with Sub-Saharan Africa, below Latin America. Um, many Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and so in, on the uh, international tax cooperation front, uh, among our 46 uh, developing member economies, um, half have not yet uh, signed on, for example, to the BEPS inclusive framework. So a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of work still left to be done. And so out, uh, in May 2021, the Asian Development Bank uh, established the Asia Pacific Tax Hub. Um, and the goal there is to promote both uh, DRM and uh, international tax cooperation in the region. It provides a platform for finance ministries and uh, tax authorities in developing Asia to collaborate both with each other and with development partners, national tax associations and others. So the, under the tax hub, three work proceeds along three pillars. The first is um, medium-term revenue strategies, so helping our member economies develop those uh, revenue strategies. A second pillar would be supporting the digital transformation of our tax administrations. And the third is integrating, apart from the tax hub, uh, just quickly three other avenues through which 
the ADB supports uh, DRM. One is policy-based lending. So for those who aren't familiar, these are loans that disperse when a country completes policy reforms that are, have been agreed with, uh, with the ADB. So we're in the process of um, pushing forward several components, for example, on tax policy, tax administration, and or international tax cooperation. Uh, another thing we're doing, a lot of technical assistance, obviously. Um, we'll, we can talk later in the challenges about uh, issues of capacity. So we're, we're, we help our member countries on uh, issues ranging from taxpayer registration systems, database development, the knowledge work. So ADB does a lot of knowledge work. We have a session this afternoon um, where we talk about uh, uh, so the Asian Development Outlook, one of our flagship reports. Uh, in April, uh, the, the theme chapter was on mobili mobilizing taxes for development. And so, uh, plug for our session this afternoon, you can learn more about what we found there. Um, but so those are sort of... Thank you very much. So again, our discussion is, is, is very short. And when uh, I, I invite you now to move to the difficulties, let me start by being quite blunt. And uh, it, it's part of my role. I devil's advocate. It's not what I think personally. So I, I need to be careful there. But if I am very blunt, I see uh, government strategies, and they want to promote domestic resource mobilization along specific lines. They want to reduce corruption in developing countries and so on. How do you tie that with ownership? I mean, you go to countries and say, this is what we want to do. We'll bring money. Do you agree? And it seems to me that naturally countries will say, oh, yes, we'll, uh, let's, let's agree. So how do you build that ownership? How do you, and, and, and by the way, historically in, in the development of developed countries, there were many decades during which the, uh, the tax receipts of the government, the revenues of governments were a low share of GDP. So we are now in a hurry to help developing countries. Where is ownership? Again, I'm, I'm not, this is not my view, huh? I'm just, asking a question, where is ownership in all this? And beyond that, what are the difficulties that you face and are they linked with ownership or not? Which maybe ownership is, is, is not a good way to frame the debate. We go the same order? Or? Oh, maybe I'll start here yeah, and then I'll go that way. Uh, so, uh, you know, Pierre asked us to reflect on sort of what we've learned so far in what we're doing. And one of them, one of the points is exactly that, that uh, it's not enough to throw money at the problem. You really need, uh, from our perspective, it's really required close engagement uh, with our country governments uh, and including understanding all the, you know, a lot of the stuff that was discussed yesterday, shareholder and uh, you know, stakeholders and interest groups. Uh, and really what we found is th there needs to be a strong champion in government. So it's uh, not, uh, in fact, not enough to say, yeah, we, you know, okay, we agree with what you're saying. In the most successful ones, have, it's really been internal to governments, really wanting people, and then ADB basically assisting in that effort. So part of our role is to be ready, first develop the capacity so that when, when the opportunity comes, these governments are able to move forward with, with the reform agenda. Okay, and does it work or what are the difficulties that you face? Yeah, well, so it has, so it's worked in, you know, yesterday we heard about Georgia. That was one, uh, this is another uh, example where reforms have uh, worked. Very recently, over the past several years, the Philippine government has been uh, instituting a, a, a comprehensive tax reform program that's had several steps, not yet completed, but again, sort of a, was able to take advantage of the fact that you had a finance minister who championed this, who happened to be close to the president. I, I, I it, it, it's a good question I, I don't confront that much in, in my in my daily work and I'll, I'll say why I think the, the there's a bigger problem
problem around what research does anyway, right? I mean, we've seen the biggest bad thing, right? I mean, we have to be very humble about what research can do. This is mostly political. Would you therefore stop funding the research that shows how important it is in, into, into funding basic services? No, of course not, right? And it could well be worse if we stopped funding that, right? The fact that it didn't seem to, I mean, and we never had a counterfactual there, right? The fact that, or would it? In, in practical terms, I, like I said, it's, it's, it's an important question, but it's not something that stops the work that we do. And, and, and one of our, appro of our approaches, many, is, is that we work with a diversity of stakeholders in any country under, of course, national, national rules. Um, uh, that that that's, this is important. We have funding for this. Are you interested in, in, in this? And and I'm always amazed by how many people we find in very difficult circumstances to to work on on issue. I, I now I've recently started a project uh, uh, supporting research on low carbon transition in Gaza. Right. So the most important thing in Gaza, I think everybody will agree, it probably is not. But we found, we found women's organizations that are innovating in their production, and we found researchers that, uh, that, 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 that were willing to support those, uh, support those efforts, right? So in the most difficult circumstances, I'm always humbled by see how they want to make. So I think that there are several issues uh, in, in your question. Of course, uh, the con I mean, uh, the big efforts we have met as donors uh, didn't provide good results enough. Uh, if we are looking at the evolution of the tax rate, uh, there is an issue. Um, and um, so if I try to analyze this, what are the main uh, issues and challenges for this agenda? Uh, first, I think the tax policy issue shouldn't be isolated from development challenges as a whole. Uh, this is an agenda that has to be taken, uh, legitimacy, the quality of public spending, and all this uh, part are uh, really part of the developing agenda. So uh, w w if we are taking this uh, agenda isolated, it cannot work uh, in the most uh, developed and vulnerable countries. It might be in more, uh, you know, uh, uh, the main obstacle for the tax base is uh, the willingness to pay because uh, you pay for what Thomas told uh, yesterday. Yeah, you pay if you, in return, you have good uh, quality uh, services, public services, which is not the case. So, I mean, we need to, to maybe to broaden, you know, the approach and to, 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 to make, I think this link is not automatically uh, done and uh, uh, in the process and uh, in the in the strategy we are promoting we could uh, have a more uh, you know exhaustive approach this is uh, and of course for appropriation and ownership uh, it's linked to the the willingness and uh, it, the willingness is there because you know when we are talking to, to that but afterwards they are not able because the population is not willing to pay so uh, it's it's a political issue. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let, let me take a, a couple of uh, questions, interventions from the participants, and then I'll give the opportunity to each of the panelists to to leave their, the message that they want to leave with the, in the time you need to think about the question you will ask. Let me take this opportunity to, to make a, a GDN-related point here. I think that what is most needed is to have a strong research base located in developing countries to work on these issues. If you have researchers work, working locally, what are the difficulties and so on, they will help the domestic debate 
debate to translate into ownership in the demand for support. And this is what we need. We need to have the countries themselves come to donors and say we need support to build our base for domestic research mobilization. And this is what we plan to do and how we would like to do it in developing countries. And for that to happen, we need research locally based. So I'm building the case for GDN. and obviously I'm biased there, but I strongly believe in it. Any, okay, please. Thank you, Chiara Bronchi, World Bank. Perhaps it's not really a question, but some sample in our experience. Uh, as you know, we have been doing, uh, we have been supporting countries to, to strengthen tax systems for 50 years, so it's not recent. And <laughs> I think initially it was certainly because it's part of the institutions, it's part of building a state, it's, about, it's part of building, uh, you know, the presence on political work or research, this is an effort that we've been trying to build not only in tax but also in statistics. National statistics is critical um, for actually national accounts and uh, building a GDP and all the rest that comes with it. It's, it's a long-term engagement. We need to be really honest about it. Um, ownership in governments, that's what we've, it, it's not a priority, it's not that it's not ownership, it, it's just not a priority. Now coming to the tax experience, where we feel there is more success is, I think I can give you two examples. One is where we are talking about administrations that are fairly well, both emerging economies and developing countries, and they start realizing the need to use data. And there's where they want to really see a policy unit. That policy unit is very specific. It's not going to issue research papers, but it does analytical work. And there's where I see synergies. And where other administrations that have that expertise in particularly in the south, so say I have a couple of experts from India national tax administrations that has exactly that experience. They have a lot of, they're very credible. So they're much more impactful. That's one example. The other example is when they're interested in building micro simulations model for assessing tax expenditure and tax policy implications. I know it sounds very sophisticated, but actually it's the three days of Python um, training, and that is much more training and helping them to draw data from, uh, from their own, actually, records. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a silver bullet. I'm just saying that that's where, but I have to say, with some of these administrations, we have been working for 30 years. It's not, you, you know, there's been that continuity of engagement. I want to say it's not landing there parachuted. It's, it's also a matter of trust, uh, also. Local demand for data, for research, for analytics. This is really part of the story. And by the way, when you reach more than 60, 30 years, it looks very short. So, it's <laughs> so I, I, I may just uh, add one, one uh, observation here. Um, Markus Meinster from the Tax Justice Network, when, when it has been said that we should, uh, how we spell this or how we decline this, right? Uh, it's a bit of an elephant in the room in my view here that we don't talk about the OECD, right? As a matter of, 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 of fact, we know that what happens in the aid dynamic on tax, whatever you are going to support as an OECD membership in terms of aid in the Global South will need to be rubber stamped by the OECD financial ministries are going to allow them to do. So I wonder how, how do we uh, face that issue of the United Nations, you know, being demanded by a lot of lower income countries uh, to be taken, uh, uh, 
more seriously in tax and playing a more important role, maybe uh, even superseding the OECD's role, uh, that is maybe not helpful to government in the global south. NORAD, for example, the Norwegian aid agency has, has been very bold in that. And they have, I think, faced a lot of, or they have succeeded in decolonizing their aid approaches a lot by, for example, openly supporting the United Nations uh, tax work and also politically supporting the move to UN tax convention, finance the French ministries of finance to follow suit and also support the United Nations tax convention as opposed to continue sort of letting the OECD constrain the tax policy space uh, consistently even in this, in this room here. Thank you. Any final comment from the room? Words of preliminary conclusions to this debate. Thank you. Let me, Helen. Yeah, it's, uh, I would like to come back, you know, on the decolonization and uh, ownership and uh, the, the, the role of, uh, you know, promoting uh, uh, local expertise. We, uh, I completely agree, and uh, this is what we are, we try, uh, we experts, we have the, the French expertise, but what we tend to do is to, to you know, to train, to, to, to strengthen the capacity of, of uh, local uh, population and local civil servants to have a roster of experts. The, 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 you know, the, the real challenge is to, uh, to, that those experts stay in the countries, uh, because once they are trained, <laughs> so... Um, uh, but we are still promoting this approach, and I concur with Pierre, and we are working extensively with the GDN and to strengthen and the IDRC as well to, to strengthen the, the, you know, the research capacity in, 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 the, in the global south to, to strengthen the peer-to-peer -peer and you know, share experience, which is very a process of research and the, research of proce uh, the process of research, which uh, lengths uh, two or three years is very important because in between we can have policy dialogue, we can have strengthening capacity, we can share norms, we can share practices, we can gather, you know, researchers from other countries and this is really important. This is a long-term agenda, we need to be very humble and the... Thanks very much. I, I, um I want to start off from the decolonization question, as I said again, that is, I think, the biggest challenge that we face. I think it's more a challenge. I, like, I think we cannot overcome that. We are, we are you know, in, in, in all our cases, we are an agency in those, in those systems, we're starting new work on intellectual property management. How do you address the possible opposition to that in, in the country? that pays for the work that we do, right? We are accountable to our taxpayers. We're accountable, good, thanks. We're accountable to our taxpayers. So we work in that system. Within that system, I, 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 there has to be a word for it. There's a bias that I believe in. I love that expression. It's like, that's what body effort a little bit small percentage, but very generous Canadian taxpayers that allow us to, to, to do this work and want us to do that too, that well. So how do we do that as well as possible? And then, then we do come back to those issues. I think it's really important to keep in mind the, the comment that, uh, that, that, that Pierre made about how much of the research for and is that I think UNESCO, UNESCO did this, that, that OECD countries on average invest like two, two and a half percent in research and development in the lowest income countries. It's, it's like 0.2, 0.3%. I mean, it's, 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 it's very small as a percentage, right? I'm not talking about total amount. So you have those continued inequalities across qualities have not changed over that uh, that period we we have to continue to work with and in the end what I what I hope but we did that we worked on competition policy for I just see it had a great project on competition policy for example that, that had equal like you know this is really tricky because are we are we strengthening 
the competitive, you know, competitiveness of countries with which Canada trades, strengthen that capacity on the ground. And in that level playing field, and certainly in a green transition, that level playing field is, is, is what we in the end have to sell the case that we all want to strive for and want to benefit from. Yep, uh, so I guess uh, in last word on my end is just that uh, on the deal, uh, having you know, money, it, it's, it's, it's not an issue of money. It, it doesn't, the investments that are needed are not large. It's really a matter of knowledge at this stage, uh, both understanding, you know, what are the reform needs, uh, and again, th in, that's very country specific. What are the capacity limitations which again also are needed. And I just wanted to second what Chiara said about a lot of the learning will actually take place peer to peer. So again, so why, why, the, why a tax hub uh, is, uh, is really valuable there. So it's really uh, at this stage, a lot of uh, in, in knowledge sort of pushing, pushing us forward on the DMN, D, DRM front. Thank you. Thank you. In domestic resource mobilization goes in the sense of ownership because we are building local resources and presumably that allows country to depend less and less on foreign funding. So it's, it's part of the building of ownership. Now, the difficulty is how to, to do it and what we have discussed here shows the end for the kind of support that uh, external uh, help uh, is uh, willing to, to bring demand for the use of statistics, demand for the use of data more globally, for demand for analytical work. Uh, it's always dangerous to arrive with a supply base really should be interested, right? Uh, so th this, and we all know it's difficult, so I, I, I want to end this discussion by really recognizing the work that is done in uh, all the development agencies, because I think it's a, it's, it's a very noble and difficult task, and helping others is not something that is easy. All NGOs present in the remarkable, so please continue this good work, and don't forget about research in developing countries. Thank you very much, and uh, we have the cafe break now. Hi. 15 minutes? Totally incredible, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs>